This is Captivating Malaga, situated on the South Andalusian coast of Spain. This beautiful city is bustling with activity. When we were deciding where to go for a little warmth and sunshine this winter, we were looking for a place to discover rather than to be confined in an all-inclusive. And Malaga certainly delivered. We chose the historic Palicio Miramar Hotel as our residence for the week and we couldn't have done better. By European standards, this gorgeous hotel is fairly young, opening its doors in 1926. But since then, it has also been used as a hospital during the Spanish Civil War and home to the Provincial Court of Malaga. However, in 2007, the court changed locations, leaving the building abandoned. It stayed that way until 2014, when Hotelas Santos purchased it and began a massive renovation. On January 1st, 2017, it reopened its doors to the Mediterranean as the Grand Hotel Miramar. There's a real emphasis on recreation and fitness in Malaga. The beachfront has been furnished with attractions for kids, a soccer enclosure, and a number of outdoor gyms, which are free for all to use. We walked everywhere in Malaga and on our last full day decided to head along the Costa del Sol where we discovered a beautiful strip full of energy. It was lined with cheap and cheerful bars and restaurants. We couldn't have picked a better spot to enjoy our last lunch in the sunshine. Restaurants are free to dispose of their recycling at any time. These stations are everywhere. Another reason why you'll notice the cleanliness of Malaga. On our first day here, we decided to climb the hundreds of steps to the historic Gibraltar and Military Museum. The long climb up the Torre Mayor was worth it in the end, as we soaked in the breathtaking panoramic views of the port city and mountains. Weary travelers like us were able to take a load off at the charming snack bar up top. I mean, I certainly needed that beer for the grueling descent. <laughs> at the bottom, you can visit the colorful courtyard of al Kazaba, which is situated right next to the Roman theater. Originally built in the first century under Emperor Augustus, the theater was abandoned to ruins during the third century. It sat here until 1951, when it was rediscovered accidentally. During the construction of the Casa de Cultura, the theater was uncovered while preparing the gardens. That project was instantly halted, and the full excavation of the theater began. Today, they are celebrating 40 years of live performances at the amphitheater, including one featuring Marcel Marceau. The 220-seat theater is open to visitors all year round. Steps away from the Roman theater in Alcazaba, you'll find the birthplace of Pablo Picasso. Built in 1861, this former residence has been an official heritage site since 1982. Inside the exhibit features much of the artwork from Picasso's father, Jose. There are many interesting mementos from their time here, including ceramics, furniture, and of course, Picasso's many styles of art. You'll find Picasso's childhood home on one of the corners of the Plaza de la Merced. There are plenty of amazing restaurants in Malaga, but for something a little offbeat, you have to try the Soho Art District. This funky area of Malaga came about thanks to a private initiative to reclaim it in the name of art. 
It has been supported by the local government and celebrities like Malaga's own Antonio Banderas, who operates a number of restaurants in Soho, including Atrezzo, which was delicious. Malaga has it all. A great historical presence as evidenced by the jaw-dropping architecture. world-class shopping and restaurants, and a carefree, vibrant attitude. We will be back. <laughs>